see our full lineup of power feeders at grizzly.com. Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. When I first started woodworking, I made a table saw sled and I made it very long, or very deep rather, to accommodate larger panels. And what I found over time was that it was very awkward to use because it was very cumbersome, especially when you're only cutting small pieces. And then later on, I made a smaller table saw sled for small parts, and I found myself using this smaller table saw sled almost exclusively, and I actually got rid of my larger table saw sled. But this was five years ago that I made this one, and it's time to make a new one. The mouth, or the kerf rather, in the middle of the table saw sled has gotten too wide. I think at one point I probably used a, dado, a stack dado set. So I'm gonna make a new one, and that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm also gonna show you how I align the fence of my table saw sled, and it might be unlike any method that you've seen before. For that, I like to use a dial indicator. I don't like to use the five cut method. I think the five cut method is an inferior method to the dial indicator. Uh, the dial indicator method is just as accurate, but it's incredibly faster. And I'm also gonna show you how I make an offset bar to make this task a lot easier. I know I probably just made some people cringe just now because I use plywood at my joiner. I've seen the comments before, but uh, my knives in my joiner are high-speed steel, and when they get dull, I just sharpen them. Really not a big deal. For the miter sled runners, I'm gonna use a piece of scrap straight grain mahogany. I'm gonna make them a little bit loose in the miter track. That's because with the changes in season, as the humidity goes up and down and the miter track runner expands and contracts, you wanna be able to adjust that fit. And that's what I'm gonna do for these runners. I'm gonna make them adjustable. I have the runner so that they're about 10 thousandths of an inch too thin, and that's enough wiggle room for the adjustment that I'm gonna make in here later. Now I just need to cut them down so that they're flush with the top of the table saw. I fed my fret saw through one of the holes in the miter track. Now I just need to connect each pair of holes. On the opposite side of this slot we made in between the two holes, I'm gonna pre-drill and countersink for a number eight wood screw. But I'm gonna, when I go to pre-drill, I'm gonna stop right before I get to the top of the opposite edge of the slot. In other words, I wanna penetrate this curve, but I don't wanna go any deeper. Now when I insert the screw with the ground off tip, it'll push the kerf open, make it for a tight fit in the miter track, and I can adjust this fit over the course of the year with seasonal changes in humidity. I attach one of the runners with three screws and I put the adjustment screws on the outside so that you can easily adjust them later without having to take the runners off. Now it's the second runner that's a little bit more difficult to put on. Now I just need to make the fences. I need to make a rear fence and the front fence. And then the front fence, I'm gonna make a track for an adjustable positive stop. I 
I milled another board the same thickness as the front and rear fence, and half of this is gonna get glued onto the center of both the front and rear fence so that I can cross cut taller pieces without cutting all the way through the fence. The original plan was to use a T-track for a positive stop to slide on a T-bolt in the front fence, but I'm completely out of T-track. So instead of going out and getting more T-track, I'm just gonna use a dovetail channel and the T-bolt will slide in the dovetail channel just fine. I'm gonna attach the rear fence now by pre-drilling and countersinking for four screws. But the front fence, I'm only gonna pre-drill and countersink for two screws now, and I'm only gonna attach it with one screw on one side. And I'll attach it with, to the other side with the second screw after I finish the alignment. That'll make more sense later. I have the rear fence attached and I have the front fence attached only on one side with a screw so that it can swivel. Now I just need to align it to 90 degrees before I can drive in more screws in the front fence. In order to use the dial indicator method to align your table saw fence to the 90 degrees, there's a few things you're gonna need. And one of them is obviously a dial indicator. And another thing you're gonna need is a magnetic base or some way to attach the dial indicator to your table saw surface. And another thing that you're gonna need is a offset bar or some way to move the stylus of the dial indicator further down or closer to the table saw surface. And I made this one out of wood. It's just a little bit over a quarter inch square um, what this does is it enables you to get the stylus closer to the table saw surface so that one thousandths of an inch movement in this direction uh, will equal one thousandths of an inch in the dial indicator reading, as opposed to tilting the dial indicator down and uh, you get a less accurate reading that way. So this is much more accurate with the offset bar. Another thing that you're gonna need is a square with a fat edge for the stylus to write against. This one is eight and a half inches long from end to end, and uh, they're pretty inexpensive, so you can find these online. And actually, I'll have a link in the description of this video if you'd like to find out uh, where you can get one of these. I've actually demonstrated this method before for lining a fence using a dial indicator, but it's been a few years. So for those of you that haven't seen it, I'm just gonna quickly go over the basics. I have my square clamped to my fence and my dial indicator with the offset bar and magnetic base off to the right-hand side of the table saw sled. It's easiest to demonstrate how this method works by showing you what happens to the dial indicator needle with a misalignment of the fence. Now, if I exaggerate a misalignment by pushing the sled fence forward and pushing the sled forward, I see the needle moves in a counterclockwise direction by a pretty huge amount. Now, if I exaggerate a misalignment by pulling the sled fence towards me, watch what happens to the needle now. It moves clockwise. So because of the direction of the needle and by the magnitude of the movement of the needle, I know which way to move the fence and by roughly how much. Moving clockwise so the fence is too far back, I'm just gonna move it forward a little bit. Still moving clockwise, so I'm gonna move the fence forward a little bit more. Now that looks pretty good. No movement on that dial indicator needle and it uh, didn't take very long at all. After driving in that screw, I always like to recheck just to make sure that the screw didn't throw the fence off at all. So let's check again to see how our alignment is. So over eight and a half inches, it's off by one thousandths of an inch. So I think I can live with that. I made a positive stop with some scrap wood and a T-bolt and it just slides in the dovetail channel that I created earlier. 
I also made another positive stop with a piece of dovetailed wood that has a nut epoxy to the back of it and a piece of threaded rod. And this one actually seems to work a little bit better than the T-bolt. So I'll probably end up using this one. As I mentioned already, I've demonstrated this method in the past for aligning a table saw sled fence 90 degrees using a dial indicator. And probably one of the most popular criticisms that I receive is that the dial indicator method is aligning the sled fence 90 degrees to the miter track, where the five cut method is aligning the blade 90 degrees to the sled fence. But uh, maybe they don't realize this, I don't know, but the table saw blade should already be parallel to your miter track. And if you align something, if you align your sled fence 90 degrees to your miter track because the blade is parallel to the miter track, it is by default 90 degrees aligned to your table saw blade. And it's easy to check to see if your blade is co-parallel or parallel with your miter track. And you can do that with a dial indicator. I like to take a Sharpie and just make a mark on one side of the blade and zero out your dial indicator, then roll that dot to the back and then take another reading. And if you don't read zero, your table saw blade is not parallel to your miter track and you need to address this problem first before you build a table saw sled. So that's it. I have a new small parts table saw sled and hopefully you guys got something out of this too. Should be a win-win, but uh, you never know. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I hope you would consider subscribing and also consider supporting what I do here at Garage Woodworks by becoming a patron and you will find a link to my Patreon page in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.